Hey guys, I'm Evelyn Cypress Design Works, and today we are going to be restoring some really cool Stanley Sweetheart chisels that are my late uncle's. These chisels are probably 70 years old, give or take, and these chisels have been sitting around dull and unused for a really long time, and these are some awesome chisels. So, now that we've got a really cool sharpening system, I thought, why not add some new life to these chisels? So I'm going to sharpen these up, uh, correct the bevel angle to a 25 degree bevel, all using our new Tormek T4. Now, disclosure up front, Tormek did provide this and the sharpening jig we're going to use today for free to us. Uh, not even for this content specifically, but we wanted to make this content because, well, we're doing something cool and why not show you guys. So in this video, I'm going to show you guys kind of the process that I use to flatten the backs and hone the backs, uh, set and correct the bevel angle, and uh, hone it up to a nice mirror polish that these will be razor sharp and ready to use on our next project. So I'm going to go over everything with the Tormek basically uh, on how to sharpen chisels and we're going to go through these five different chisels and go from there. So anyway, stick around. Let me know if you guys have any questions down in the comments and as you guys know if you're already subscribed and you haven't hit that notification bell, make sure to do that so you guys get notified when we make content like this in the future. Thanks. All right, so like I mentioned earlier, we're using a Tormek T4. This is their classic size. So this wheel here is 200 millimeters or about eight inches in diameter. Uh, we're actually using the 600 grit diamond stone, which is basically a fine stone. So this is gonna get a really, really nice edge. And because it's a diamond stone, it's gonna cut pretty dang fast. So we're able to go through probably these five chisels uh, because they're in such bad shape, probably about an hour to do all five but to do a chisel that is already been flattened and just needs to touch up, uh, we can do those in like two or three minutes between the uh, flattening and sharpening and then the honing. So really, really quick once we get our chisels up to speed, but to get these five up and running is gonna take me about an hour, I'm guessing, if they're similar to those that I did earlier this week. Because we're using a diamond stone, we don't need to fill this trough up all the way with water, but we do wanna put some water in there and a little bit of the anti-corrosion stuff that they give you with your diamond stone. But if you're using a regular stone, you can just go ahead and fill it right up to that max line because that stone's gonna suck up a lot of that water. You wanna make sure you keep filling it up until it kind of stabilizes and stops taking more water in. Uh, but yeah, we're gonna go ahead and get started. The first thing we wanna do is make sure everything is clean, make sure our work area is nice and safe. And then we're going to go ahead and start by adding a nice flat to the back of these bevels. That's the first step in sharpening a chisel is to make sure that your back is flat. And we do that by using the actual side of the stone. So we're going to turn the machine on. We're going to take our chisel, making sure not to put our leading edge in first. We don't want to put our tip in and damage our tip. So we're going to start by putting the back gently with light pressure, the back down. And then we're going to push that into the wheel as it's spinning and hold nice, light, consistent pressure. You don't need to force it in, but you also don't want to put no pressure. So, you know, a happy medium of pressure. And basically what we're looking for is the flat to form, I should have grabbed a sharp chisel to show you guys, but we're looking for the back to form a nice silver flat patch all the way up to our tip. And that tells us we're ready to move on to the next step. So, again, to start, we're gonna put light contact and push our tip down after we push the middle of our chisel down and we're going to hold that there and keep checking it until we see that silver, meaning the metal's been removed, all the way up to the tip. So go ahead and jump right in. Help if I plug it in, huh? All right, when you turn your Tormek on, you're going to see water start getting pulled up. And even though the whole side isn't covered with water, once you put your chisel into it, it'll push water across the whole thing. The water helps not only cool the stone, or in this case, the diamond wheel, but it also helps pull the metal that you're shaving off and keep it from getting clogged up in your grit and keep it from getting clogged up on your chisel. So it just helps keep the process moving quickly. So again, I'm gonna start by putting the back in nice and light, and then I'm gonna push it flat. And essentially this is gonna take a few minutes for me because these chisels have not been taken care of. If there's chips in your tip, or if you've got a hollow or a belly, which are two ways of saying not flat, essentially, um, it can take a few minutes to flatten the back. So this is probably the most time consuming part of sharpening bad chisels or chisels that have been abused or hand sharpened poorly for years. And the reason is there's just the most metal to remove. So because we're having to flatten this entire back, we're sharpening or really flattening uh, a large portion of the back. And that takes a lot of material removal. So it's gonna take a few minutes here to get this nice and flat. But what you're looking for as you go 
you're going to start seeing this silver appear where it's contacting the wheel. And where it's not contacting, that means it's a low spot. So basically, I really only need, you know, half an inch at the top to be flat. I don't need this whole back to be flat. There's no benefit to that. Uh, your working surface is up here. And basically what I'm looking to do is get this silver patch to cover all the way across. And about a half inch band is what I look for on a chisel about this size. Uh, if you get a really small chisel, you can flatten a shorter piece. But the smaller chisels flatten so fast, there's not really a big reason to change what you're doing. So I'm going to keep going to town on this until this silver area comes all the way across my chisel and hits this low area. And that tells me I've got a nice flat reference surface that I can use in the next stage of my sharpening. Again, I'm just putting nice light pressure here. Another thing that I'm doing is I'm not staying in one spot on the side, but I'm actually moving up and down on my wheel. And the reason for that is I don't want to dull the stone just in one spot. I want to kind of share the love here and make sure that I'm using up the grit and the whole stone. Now these diamond stones and even the factory stone that comes with these sharpeners last an incredibly long time. So it's not a huge deal. But I don't want to, especially if you're using the traditional stone, you don't want to create a channel where you kind of naturally put your chisel. You want to flatten the stone all the way across. Now these diamond stones don't wear like the traditional stones do, um, but they, the grit will dull eventually on the diamond stone. So again, it's still a good practice with the diamond stone to move your chisel up and down along the side so that I'm not using one specific spot. But it is more important on the stone wheels that come with the sharpening systems. And this practice is the same thing you would do if you got the T8 system, which is the big brother to this one. But realistically, the T4 will do the same thing the T8 does. So um, whichever one you have, you should be able to get really, really nice sharp chisels. So again, I'm going to like you to use a paper towel. So I've gotten it all the way across, but now I'm going to bring it down a little bit. And that's just the same process, but I want to flatten a larger surface. And also, if you look at the very tip, this was clearly hand sharpened, and there's uh, they, they sharpened it to cheat. Basically, they put a micro bevel on it, and I want to flatten that micro bevel out, which takes a good bit of time because they put a massive micro bevel on this thing. It's more of a regular bevel than a micro bevel. So, anyways, I'm gonna fast forward here, but uh, I'll catch you guys once I'm finished with this step here in just a sec. All right, so it took about 15 minutes to get this back flattened with the 600 grit diamond stone. If you use a coarser stone, like a 300 grit coarse stone or a coarse setting on your uh, natural stone that comes with this system, you can go a little bit faster. But with the 600 grit, it took about 15 minutes because this thing had a mega, mega belly in it. So really, really not flat, but now it's perfectly flat. Uh, I forgot to mention that you want to make sure that you are using the stone with your tip going towards the direction of travel. So I don't want my point to get caught on the stone and tear either the chisel or the stone. So it's good to keep your tip, again, the stone is traveling away from my tip. So it's pointed in the direction of travel and that just prevents you from accidentally damaging your chisel or your sharpening stone. So now that I've got the back flat, the next thing I'm gonna do is come over to my honing wheel and I'm just gonna put a nice little hone on the back. I'm gonna come back at the end and hone both the bevel and the back. But I like to stop here and hone the back a good bit. And really what I'm looking to do is kind of get a nice polish on the back, which if you feel the bevel of your chisel after flattening the back, you should feel a little bit of a burn. It's just kind of like a rough, coarse feeling. You can see it if you look closely. And it's basically just where the metal has folded up. And I'm gonna just use the uh, leather strop here to kind of polish that and make sure that that uh, folds towards the bevel and then when we sharpen the bevel it'll get filed off and we'll form a burr on the back and then we'll take that and we will again hit the hone at the end. So I'm going to move over to the leather strop. It's really important uh, again to move back and forth while I'm polishing and stropping but also to put really good firm downward pressure. Uh, you can't really put too much pressure unless you're like really manhandling it but good pressure uh, I even like to hold onto the handle here and press down with my thumb and kind of coast back and forth and that seems to give a really nice mirror polish. You can actually get like a glass mirror polish finish using the strop if you use just a little bit of the honing compound, which again comes with your system. Uh, this goes a long way. This is basically like, I think they say it's like 1200 grit, so you can get a really nice mirror polish. That's going to make your chisel really, really sharp and allow you to get really nice mirrored edges. So just remember a little bit goes a long way when you're applying this stuff. So 
I'm going to put just a tiny bit on because I don't really need a lot. I'm going to put a little bit there, turning it by hand. A little bit there. And a little bit there. And then I'm going to use my chisel back to smooth that out and you'll see how that goes here in just a sec. So you can see how it's kind of working its way around. And now that I got it nicely, I'll wipe off the excess on my paper towel here. Now I'm going to go to town and just kind of polish this thing up. It doesn't take long, about 30 seconds. Again, good, strong downward pressure. I'm coming back and forth along the honing wheel. some of that excess compound off. Again, good, consistent downward pressure. And a nice glassy mirror finish. So that means I'm ready to move on to uh, setting my bevel angle and sharpening my bevel. To do that, I'm going to use uh, the Tormek WM200, which came with the system. This is a super cool little angle setting jig, and I'm going to use this with the Tormek SE77 jig, which is a jig specifically designed for sharpening things with straight edges like chisels, planes. Uh, those are the two that I use it for. I'm sure there are other tools in your shop. Um, I'm going to actually spin this around. Because unlike when we're doing the back, when we're sharpening the front, we actually want to put our bevel uh, against the direction of travel. So I'm going to be, the wheel's going to spin this way, and I'm going to put my bevel down into that. And that's the recommendation from Tormek, and I haven't done enough experimenting to tell them they're wrong. So that's what we're going to do today. So again, I'm going to set my WM200 guide up. This is based on the diameter of your wheel, so depending on which stone you have and which system you have, it's really, really simple. So I've got an eight inch stone or a 200 millimeter. So I set this one to 200 and I'm going to do a 25 degree bevel because I do a lot of hardwood work. Uh, 20 degree works great for like soft woods. 30 degree is really good for like heavy duty mortising or chiseling with a hammer where you're going to be doing a lot of abusive chiseling. It won't be quite as sharp. Uh, as perceptively sharp but it'll be a lot more durable so it just depends on what you're going for 25 is a good universal chisel uh, bevel and you can always change it later if you change your chisel usage so in my shop though I do a lot of you know light duty pairing I do some slight mortising things like bow ties um, so this being 25 degrees just makes it a more universal chisel so that's what I'm gonna do so 25 degrees here 8 inches or 200 millimeters here um, so I'm going to leave that for a second. <clears throat> and the cool thing about this jig is it's really, really simple to set up. Basically, I'm going to slide my chisel through. Make sure I get this in the right orientation. Uh, slide my chisel through. There's a flat right here running parallel. I'm going to make sure that my chisel registers against that flat. I'm just going to tighten these screws down. That's it. So that flat makes sure that I'm nice and 90 degrees. So I'm going to get a, a 90 degree bevel. Um, you can, with the SE77, this jig, you can do things like, um, you can put a, I forget what it's called, but uh, you can basically do like a scrub plane where you can actually swivel it so it creates more of a, a rounded tip instead of a square tip. Um, in this case, though, that's not what I want, so I'm going to leave it like this. So, now I've got my chisel in the jig and down, but if you look from the side, it's not at the correct angle. So I'm going to loosen these two screws on this support arm. And this is where I'm going to use my WM200 jig. I'm going to show you guys the side angle here. And basically what I'm doing, I'm going to take the round function or the round feature, put it on my stone, and then I put this right at the edge of my back. So I want it to be as close to the blade as I can get it. It doesn't have to be exact. Um, and again, now I'm going to use the micro adjust knob on my support arm here to raise it up because I've got a gap and I'm basically trying to get the flat of this jig parallel with my back and that's going to tell me that I'm at 
that 25 degrees. So now that I've got that jig lined up, tighten it down. It doesn't have to be exact. Don't kill yourself trying to get it perfect. But it is very easy to get accurate with this little micro adjust wheel. So now that I've got these tightened down, I'm ready to go to town sharpening. So similarly to how I described the stropping process, I'm going to follow a similar process here. I'm going to bring my chisel off, turn on my Tormek, push it down nice and gently, light pressure, even up to moderate pressure, and I'm going to start going side to side. It's important to move side to side because I don't want to wear out one section of my stone unevenly. I want to try to keep the wear nice and consistent. So I'm going all the way to the edge, and I'm actually going past the edge by about a millimeter or two. Again, nice moderate downward pressure. If you want, you can put the safety stops on, which I probably should, but with these wider chisels, it's really not that important. It's when you get to your narrower chisels that you have a higher risk of falling off the side of the stone, and that's when the safety stops that come with the jig are really, really handy. But in this case, with the one-inch chisel, really not all that important. So I'm just going to keep working this back and forth. Again, just slightly overlapping on each side. I like to hold it on the actual chisel and put my pressure up here while keeping my thumbs behind the jig. And this seems to be a really comfortable way to hold it, but also a good way to get pressure kind of evenly across the bevel, which is important. I'm going to stop and take a look. And you can see that I'm cutting only on this front end of the bevel and not the back yet. And that's because this was at a different angle and was hand sharpened, so it did not actually have a flat. It had more of a curve to it. So all I'm going to do is keep going back and forth until I bring this nice flat all the way across the bevel of my chisel. Change the angle for you guys here so you can see it a little bit differently. So the nice thing about this jig is it really does all the work for you. It holds it at the exact right angle so you get a nice chisel bevel. It's going to end up being really, really sharp. And I don't have to do a lot of thinking here. I'm not really paying too much attention to anything other than the overlap and the downward pressure. Once you've done a couple of these, this is really mindless work. You can have the TV on in the background and do your whole chisel set in a few minutes once you've done this the first time. It really goes by really, really fast. And because we're not removing as much material as on the back, sharpening the bevel and changing bevel angle even is much, much faster. Obviously, if you're going from like a 30 degree to a 20 degree, it's going to take you a little bit of time, but even in this case, when I've got a really poorly sharpened chisel, I'm already almost done. So a few more passes and this is going to propagate that flat all the way through the tip. And then we have ourselves a functional chisel again. All right, so now I've got my bevel fully flattened and sharpened using this sharpening stone. The only thing left to do is to finalize my honing. So I'm going to head over to the honing wheel. I'm going to flip it around again. I don't want to run my freshly sharpened tip into the leather. I want the leather, which it turns this direction on the machine, I don't want to cut into the leather, right? I want it to pull past. So I'm going to flip it around one more time, and that way I get the correct approach with the leather. All right. So now I've got my strop running in the correct direction. And similarly to how I did my back, I'm going to put nice downward pressure. Again, I like to hold this handle, but do whatever feels comfortable. That just gives me a little bit of control. And I'm going to slowly and lightly put my bevel in. And then once I get that bevel kind of seated against the leather, I'm going to put a good bit of downward pressure. And again, just kind of move back and forth nice and slowly until I really polish up that tip and move that burr towards the back once more. showing you guys a majority of my honing because I think it's important to appreciate that it doesn't take a long time but it takes longer than you kind of think it would so you don't want to skimp on this part of the process because this is what makes a sharp chisel ridiculously sharp if you just did the stone you would have a sharp chisel that would work probably pretty well but once you hone it it becomes incredibly sharp so this step is worth taking a minute or two to get down and do a really good job to really polish up that blade and really, really remove that burr 
because this is what takes a sharp chisel and makes it really, really incredibly sharp. So I'm going to take a few more seconds to really sharpen up my bevel, and I'm actually going to hit my back once more on the hone because I removed so much material off the bevel. I want to basically re-hone my back slightly. So I'm going to hit the bevel for a few more seconds, and then I'm going to touch up my back, and then this chisel is going to be ready to shave with. One of the ways you can see if your chisel is perfectly deburred, and it doesn't really tell you how sharp it is, but it tells you if you missed anywhere on your honing, is you can run the blade across your fingernail and feel for any snags. That may sound weird, but you'll know it when you feel a snag on your fingernail. So again, I'm being very careful here. I'm gonna run it across my fingernail just gently. It's not gonna cut through your fingernail if you put very light pressure, and you can tell if there's any snags. So I don't have any snags, which tells me this thing is good to go. Another quick way to test how sharp your chisel is, is to try to do a little bit of paring on end grain of a hardwood like this maple here. So we'll zoom in here, I'll show you guys uh, how we can do a nice little chamfer with sharp chisels, and then obviously how well it does with the end grain. Well, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, obviously we enjoyed sharpening up these uh, vintage chisels and getting to put them back into our uh, chisel rotation, so that's super exciting. We've got a nice mirror polish on them and they are clearly very, very sharp, so that's very exciting. Uh, if you guys enjoyed this video, per usual, we'd ask you guys to leave a like and a comment down below. And if you're not already subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell if you're on YouTube so you can get notified when we make content like this in the future. For those who are interested in picking up a Tormek system to sharpen your chisels, planes, knives, scissors, axes, and everything else, uh, you can check them out in our Amazon store. We've got the T4 and the T8 and a bunch of different jigs that we like listed there. So uh, that's a great way to support Nicole and I and the content that we make as well as a cool company like Tormek. Thanks again for sticking around, guys. Have a great rest of your day.